Can a bathtub be turned into a shower without removing the old tiles? I get this question from my customers often and my response is always no for so many reasons. But that's exactly what we're going to do in this video and hopefully by the end of it you should have enough information to make an informed decision on whether or not you want to go down this road. So let's get into it. The first thing you have to understand is every bathtub requires a certain degree of angle in order to remove it in one piece. If you're not removing the existing tile above the tub line then you won't have that room needed to finesse the tub out of its current location. The only option is to cut the tub in smaller pieces. But before that you're going to have to remove at least the first row of tile above the tub line to get access to the tub flange screws which is what is securing the tub to the walls. Now if you're going to remove one row of tile you might as well go ahead and remove two rows of tile. It'll make things easier, trust me. These diamond multi-tool blades make it pretty easy to cut through the grout line and I will include links below for some of the different tools I used on this project. All right now we can start cutting this tub. What a waste. And herein lies your first reason for not going down this road. The whole process of removing the tub only has taken almost twice as long as if I had demoed all the walls first. Let's continue on and see if things get easier. I don't do plumbing on customer projects. It's just a liability thing. So the plumber will need to remove or cap off the old tub spout and rough in the new two inch trap and drain before we can install the new fiberglass shower pan. So while he's doing that, I'm going out to the garage to check out this customer's hobby. All right, with the new base installed, I can now cut the new wall board to fill in where the tub was down to the new shower pan. Now for the second reason for not going this route is waterproofing, or in this case, a lack of a continuous waterproof wall system. Now in a perfect world, I would be using den shield or something equivalent for the wall board, but where we live, selection is scarce. So I'm using a drywall called Aquaboard, which is a type of moisture resistant board Probably not the best for showers, but we'll try to fix that in the next step. Here I'm just cutting it all to fit and then screwing it onto the wall studs using inch and a quarter drywall screws. From there, I'll mud and tape all the seams to get as flat a surface as possible before applying a secondary layer of protection called Red Guard. Now Red Guard is a rubberized coating that you can roll on and anytime I use it, I always like to apply two coats. It dries really fast, so two coats usually only takes a few hours to get finished. After our waterproofing has dried, we can finally start tiling. But first let's talk about the third and fourth reasons for not going down this road. When tiling walls, you always want to start from the bottom and work your way up the wall. In order to make our new tile match up to the old wall tile, we'll have to use a ledger board because bottom row will have to be scribed and cut once the top section has been applied and dry, which adds an extra day right there. Our fourth reason why not to do this has to do with matching the existing tile. Now, if you're planning a completely different contrasting tile, this is not even an issue, but if you're trying to match tiles like we were, well, think again. We thought we found a perfect match to the existing tiles, both in size and color. Well, we got the size right, not so much the color. Now, what do we do? Because this looks terrible. The homeowner made a decision to try and find a border tile we could use to break the two colors. This could work. However, it did require us to now remove another row of tiles, including the drywall, then rewaterproofing again. This is getting a little frustrating now, but we're too far in, so we gotta keep going.
Also for good measure, I am gonna add a bead of silicone up into the crack to try to get as much waterproofing protection as we can get. Adding a border definitely helped, but we will not know what it truly looks like until we apply the grout. Grout can change everything. Going with an avalanche white grout and again hoping it's the same color as the existing tiles. Okay, I think we're gonna be okay here. The border helped a lot, but the real blessing in disguise was the color of the base turned out to be the exact match to our new tiles. This was pure luck because I purchased the only acrylic base in town. Thank God some things just work out. As we install a new shower head, new extension, and tempered half glass, let's talk about the do's and don'ts of a project like this. Did this one turn out? Yes. Would I do another one? Never. Let's talk about the don'ts. Just don't do it. Don't think about it, don't do it yourself, and definitely don't ask your contractor to do it. You don't save any money, it takes way more labor than you think, and it's just easier and less expensive to pull all the walls and do it the right way. Now let's talk about the do's. If you're thick in the head, and this is what you're gonna do regardless of what I say, here are some things to think about. One, pick a contrasting tile selection. The chance of you finding the exact match and dye lot is highly unlikely. Two, do your best to waterproof the open wall areas. This is super important to extend the life of your new shower. Three, figure out the right grout color. The wrong grout color may even be worse than the wrong tile color. And four, do it with passion because it may be the only thing that gets you through to the finish line of a project like this. Thanks for watching guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, think about subscribing and maybe we'll see you on the next one.